Hey folks, Technover is here. Today we're going to be printing oh, one of these. This is a 20 by 40 V slot rail extrusion. This one came off the Ender 3 when we changed it to add the 500 millimeter height mod. So uh, my Ender 3 goes up to 4 10 millimeters without problems. We are going to print one of these at 350. This particular one is a little bit closer to 400. I think it's 410. Uh, I haven't measured it. I don't have calipers that long. Uh, but I do have the one that we printed at 350, and it comes pretty close to this. We will show you at the end. Uh, the print was pretty successful, as you'll see, although we do need to adjust the settings a little bit at the end. And if you watch, I print this at 25 millimeters a second in the G-code, but I did turn the speed up to about 300% at the beginning of the print. So we're running around 75 millimeters a second to start with, and then gradually slowing it down. And this was a two-day print, and it took quite some time. We did do a live stream of this halfway through, and towards the end, and there were some interesting comments on, and thoughts. So when we get done with this, uh, I am going to do another take on this in another video with a couple of the parameters mentioned taken into account to see if we can fix the problems that we did start having towards the end. And I'll show you those in just a second. First thing we're going to do is open up the thingy browser here. We're going to look for the model we want. I'm looking for a 20 by 40 B slot rail extrusion. So there should be plenty of options in here. I can look on both Thingiverse and on my manufacturer. Uh, we should be able to, just skipping through real quick, find one that will work for us here. Let's go to the next page. Okay, um, this is close. This is 20 by 60. We want 20 by 40. Uh, I think this will work. Nope, this one's too big. Uh, yeah, yeah, we want 20 by 40. So we're going to take this out. We'll go back. We will search 20 by 40, um, and that should bring up some results. And then what we are going to do is, after we add it to our build plate, and I'll show you how to do this in just a second, we are going to go in and there, this one's 130, 20 by 40. Okay, so not quite tall enough. Uh, there's an easy fix for that. We're just add to the build plate here. And we're going to go into the scale. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn off uh, the button that makes it scale automatically in all directions here. I'll just show you here. We'll click and select our model sometime today. There we go. Uh, then we'll go over here to the scale and we're going to turn off the uniform scaling because we're just going to be scaling on the Z. But this way it keeps the same dimensions on the X and the Y, which means our V slot and interlocking mechanism there will stay the same. Uh, we're going to change the height. I'm going to play around with this for a little bit. I am actually going to eventually settle on 350, although I did experiment with a couple other heights as well. You can set it to whatever you want. Um, in this particular case, I will tell you, I found out I did really well until about 250 millimeters, and then after that, there started to get some wobble, and you'll see that in the model, uh, which can be taken care of with speed adjustments, but there are uh, limits on how slow you can make the machine go, so can't necessarily slow it down as much as we'd like to achieve that perfect print at the top. Uh, the problem with printing tall objects like this is the taller and thinner it is, the more it tends to wobble because of the force of the print head pushing down and then moving sideways on the top of the model. So it is really easy to knock it over or to end up extruding uh, layers that have shifted either on the Y particularly or also possibly on the X. So, uh, we're just going to wrap this up here real quick, so bear with me for a second. And now that I've gotten that pretty much where I wanted. I'm going to go in and make a couple adjustments to some of the other settings. Now, uh, I want to add a shell to this. I want to decrease the layer height because the less we're trying to add, the smoother it should come out. Uh, we're going to add one more shell and we are going to go ahead and adjust the infill as well. Now, this particular model, because of that added shell, there doesn't actually end up being any part that is used as infill, but we're going to turn it down to 20% just so it's not over extruding in any way. And the other thing that I want to pay attention to here uh, is the build plate adhesion. Now, on this particular instance, I am using a brim. Uh, a wrap would work as well, although there is 
a little bit better chance that it will release from the raft by being pulled on by the printhead than it being released from the brim itself. So uh, if you really want this to succeed, what you'll do is increase the brim size, uh, the length of the brim. Uh, that will give you better adhesion at the base and keep it from wobbling as much at the top with the action of that print head. And this is that giant 350 millimeter tall extrusion we were talking about. Right now I have the speed set to 25 millimeters per second in the G-code, but I do have it turned up on the Ender 3 to 200% right now. So max speed, it is only running 50 millimeters per second. This is supposed to be a two day print. We are going to have to come back and check on this one guys, because I am not gonna sit here and time lapse a two day print and try and speed it up for you just going to take up way too much space on my hard drive. So we'll check in periodically and basically just see how it's going. I'm not quite expecting to be able to reach that full 350 without starting to get wobble, but that is the reason that I have the turn, the speed turned way down. And as we creep upward, I will continue to lower that speed. Eventually I'm expecting to have to cut it down to about half of what is programmed in there. So we'll be running, uh, somewhere around 12 to 13 millimeters a second by the time this is over which is excruciatingly slow but it is the only way to keep a tall print from that like that from knocking over from vibration and things like that now it is important to say that you can also go in and alter the g-code to change the speed at specific layers I haven't done that here because I'm going to be monitoring this print and seeing as how it's such a long print to begin with that gives me a lot of time to come and adjust the speed as I see fit. So I'm just gonna keep checking in on it and we'll come back to you when we have the next video. And good morning Ender 3, I see I made some spaghetti for breakfast. Uh, I woke up to this mess today and as you can see, this is always a worry when you're doing a extended print that lasts several days. It did not make it through the night. Not quite clear on what happened here um, because the machine obviously nothing touched it or interacted with it and I don't know why it just all of a sudden started printing crap so uh, we're gonna go back and start this guy over and we will try it again figured it out take a look see at the top left corner and you'll see why this print failed uh, this is actually the second time I've had this issue in the last two days um, but on two different printers so uh, you'll notice I am not even plugged in. Now, obviously it started the print fine, so somehow this came unhooked, and that is much less than ideal. So unfortunately, when I moved my Ender 3, I was not paying attention to where I set it down, and this cable here got stuck directly under the foot, and as it tried to rise, it just yanked itself out. Very, very interesting. This is the problem is the Z-axis kept raising it up, even though it was tugging on the harness, and since that will raise independently without this plugged in, it still just kept going up and up, but the X must have stopped moving. Now, I did not get a video of the fail, but I'm fairly confident that's what happened because my printer parts don't just unplug themselves. So we have started it back up. We will begin another print and we will check on it as soon as we start laying down that first layer again. Still making progress on the Ender 3 here. We are down to 250%. I'm gonna let it ride like that for quite a while. Uh, like I said, last night I'm pretty sure it was a fluke because of the way that I set that on the cable. So I know for a fact that I measured how high the cable can rise without becoming taut. And that's why the gantry is set at 410 in the firmware, not the full 500 for the full size of the mod. So uh, because I did not buy those extended cables. You can get cables that are longer and get it all the way up to the top there. But I don't really have a need for that at the moment. So we're just rolling with what we got.
Now, real quickly, we were watching this get really close to finishing up here, and we are almost at the end. So, as this guy gets taller, uh, you can see a couple of shifts towards the top end. Uh, those are points where it started to wobble a little bit, and I turned it down. And then you can see it correcting itself. Now, we're getting to a point here in this print where uh, it is just about to make a shift that is not correctable. And at that point, I am going to turn the speed up just kind of All right, so for comparison, I've already shown you these slot the slot layer tape by removing it from the bed, now taking some measurements, the and seeing what actually in happens. Entirety. Now, this is the bottom, and this is the top. And if you look, it does look pretty decent. You can see a discoloration here, and this is where we lost our... Uh, it basically had a, a y-axis shift that was beyond repair, and at this point, we're going so slow that it is at the minimum possible speed in the firmware. If we get a little closer there, you can get a better view of that skip there. Uh, so all in all, this came out to be a pretty nice model. The problem is this last 50 or so millimeters. So if we put it up to the other Ender 3 bar, you can see it is about 50 millimeters short, uh, probably closer to 60. Uh, but that's okay. It did come out to the height we put in there. It was 350 millimeters. We did do a really nice job all the way across to about this last 100 millimeters. I should have turned it down a little sooner here. Um, I believe this was a print overnight. And then when I woke up and turned it down, you could see it correct itself. Uh, once it was at the minimum, there was no correcting it any further. So once it started to shift at that point, and you got to remember that this is pretty tall, moving back and forth like this. Uh, so that shift in that direction kind of makes sense. Uh, there are a couple of things that we can do to try and tackle that. And I think if I were to use this and put this part at the bottom, it would work pretty well because the rest of this channel is uh, pretty straight, actually. So, uh, and you got to consider that when this bar is placed on the printer itself, Everything below here is below the bed, so we're not really riding on that part anymore. So it probably would be possible with a little bit of modification to use this, uh, but we are going to try again and see if we can get a little bit better result. That will be posted in another video probably sometime next week, so stay tuned for that. We will compare and contrast the two and see if any of the things that we change have a big enough effect to merit printing another one of these. So uh, if not, we will roll with what we get and possibly go back to the drawing board but for now i think that we are definitely heading in the right direction and i think this is doable so we're going to try it one more time and see how things come out and i will see you in the next video as always this channel is brought to you by these fine patreon supporters if you'd like to support the channel on patreon head over to www.patreon.com technivorous that's going to be it for this video. As always, I am Technivorous, and thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out our main channel page where we do a free giveaway for our subscribers every month. So far, we've given away things like a Capricorn PTFE tubing kit and spools of filament. So the giveaway videos are always pinned to our main channel page. So all you have to do is subscribe and leave a comment on the giveaway video for the current contest. Feel free to check out this video right here. YouTube picked it for my content just for you. And if you haven't already, you can hit the subscribe button right here. So what are you waiting for? Become a Technivore now. Thanks again. Technivorous out.